Hello, YouTube. The collective action problem, free riders and public goods. When I first heard those terms, I thought my professor was about to go on a rant about socialism. But as it turns out, they're actually crucial terms that explain why politics seems to be so full of so much wasted time and effort. The collective action problem begins by understanding the limits of enforcing a plan of action in relation to the fair redistribution of resources. The scenario that takes place concerns a situation where the combined efforts of a group, the collective, provide the greatest amount of benefits for the group, public goods, but since some individuals have different interests, they choose to not participate, free riders, encouraging defection from others and hurting the group as a whole. An example being a village full of 50 individuals. Half hunt one day while the other half rest, with this system repeating every day. Now, of the 25 hunting, if an individual decided to hide and skip out, they'd still get the food from the hunt, as no one would be certain that they skipped out. Now, let's say their friend finds out. It's probably pretty miffed that they've been hunting and receiving the same amount of food as their friend, so they too decide to drop out of the hunt. You see the problem here? If this trend continues, more people will opt out of the hunt until eventually you'll only have a small group of villagers hunting. This leaves them with limited resources to complete the hunt, eventually resulting in the death of the village due to casualties from the hunters or from the famine that will arise from a lack thereof. What this demonstrates is in the name itself. We have the collective working towards a common goal and the action problem where free riders can choose to forgo action yet still reap the public goods. Undoubtedly a problem for those who want the group to do well, but are stuck with individuals who do not. This problem extends to the real world with other things such as voting, climate change reforms, and group projects, where some people may choose to not give their full effort, yet still receive the benefits from the efforts of others. Now, in what circumstances does the collective action problem apply? Pretty much any scenario with public goods, goods that are the result of the collective, but do not require someone to participate to get those benefits, and a lack of punishment for free riders, a-holes who choose to divest from the interests of the group, but still reap the benefits. Are there any solutions, you ask? Well, what we need is an enforcer. Someone who can ensure that those who refuse to comply face the consequences of doing so. In the village example, this could be an elder who ensures that of the 50 people, all of them are going with the group to hunt. If someone is found to have skipped, uh, they are expelled from the group. This ensures that individuals do not feel that they can skip out and still retain the benefits due to a threat over a prolonged period of time. In our real-life examples, the solutions are seen as jail time in Australia if one does not vote, massive fines for failing to meet climate change quotas in countries such as Norway, and in university, the literal threat of violence. I swear, some professors won't do shit, so we have to bring a bat in and... No, no, wait, no, don't do that. But you get my point. Consequences over a period of time are the solution to the collective action problem. In conclusion, a collective action problem is one where the group can achieve goals, but... Not everyone must participate to receive those benefits, resulting in free riders taking the benefits in the form of public goods. To mend this, one must add a set of consequences to ensure compliance. Thank you kindly for listening. I know it's been a while, but I have some cool videos coming up on the prisoner's dilemma in game theory next. This has been What the Politics. Peace.